Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfet. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met Ambassador Justin H. Cyberwell, the newly appointed Ambassador of the United States to the Kingdom of Bahrain at Qadabiyya Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of bilateral relations between Bahrain and the U.S., which are built on strong foundations and shared goals. He went on to praise the long-standing ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the U.S., emphasizing the importance of strengthening cooperation across all levels in support of shared strategic priorities. His Royal Highness welcomed Ambassador Cyberwell to Bahrain, wishing him success in his new role, expressing his full support to the furthering of ties between the two nations. The Crown Prince also reviewed issues of common interest with the Ambassador, as well as current regional and international issues. His Royal Highness highlighted the role played by the U.S. along with international partners and allies in maintaining security and stability in the region and combating all forms of terrorism. For his part, Ambassador Cyberwell expressed gratitude and appreciation for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and welcomed the Crown Prince's interest and support in further enhancing relations between Bahrain and the United States. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Honorary President of the Bahraini Mixed Martial Arts Federation and Chairman of the Higher Organizing Committee for the Brave International Combat Week, Azana Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today at his office at the Wadi Palace U.S. Business Delegation to discuss the U.S. experience in the martial arts sports and ways to develop it in the region. His Highness talked about the sports being practiced in the kingdom, including the mixed martial arts and the triathlon. He provided the delegation with a detailed explanation regarding the development of these sports to reach an international level which reflects His Highness's keenness to exchange expertise with various world countries to develop the MMA sport in the kingdom. The U.S. delegation expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for providing the youth with the opportunity to showcase their abilities and capabilities. They wished His Highness further success. His Highness Sheikh Khalid visited yesterday a member of the MMA International Federation and President of the U.S. Federation of the Game, Frank Babcock, at the PDF Hospital due to a health emergency that happened at Khalifa Sports City Hall. His Highness urged to follow up on the situation of the member until he is fully recovered. His Highness is keen on taking care of all of his guests and that Bahrain is keen on following up on all matters of participants in this World Sports event. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Honorary President of the Bahraini Mixed Martial Arts Federation and Chairman of the Higher Organizing Committee for the Brave International Combat Week, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, highlighted the qualification of four fighters from Bahrain to the World Championship semi-finals. Commenting on the quarterfinals, His Highness Sheikh Khalid stated that he watched the fights closely, focusing on the abilities and skills of the competitors. He praised the professional performance and enthusiasm of fighters which resulted in the success of the championship. His Highness Sheikh Khalid affirmed support the Bahraini fighters who qualified to the semi-finals expressing confidence in their abilities. He also commended the participation of Bahraini female fighters adding that the purpose of their participation was to give them enough experience to help them in the upcoming tournaments. His Highness Sheikh Khalid said that the kingdom's hosting of the event has resulted in promoting its comprehensive development in all fields fields in addition to other economic and tourism gains. He affirmed the keenness to host and organize more mixed martial arts tournaments in the future to enhance Bahrain's position on the world sports map.
As the quarterfinals come to a close, Khalifa Sports City Hall witnessed a tough level of competition as the opening of the eighth round of the tournament kicks off. The IMAF World Championships held 43 bouts in all three cages under the IMAF Amateur MMA rules. It's a great honour to come out and represent my country out on the, the international scene. Um, coming out to Bahrain is great, man. Everyone treats us here really well. And the show has run really well. That's one thing that I've, I've noticed. It's a massive production and it's, it's great to be a part of something so grand. Um, the competitors are good, man. Like The amateur game is good. Um, it's a tough competition, this is, for the guys, man. They win, they have to compete again the next day. So, yeah, there's a high level of guys here for the amateur scene and, yeah going to see a lot of good fights. Amazing to be at a world championship like this, just competing with athletes from all over the world and just on this stage, it's amazing just to, to be here representing your country. The biggest event in the history of amateur MMA features a high number of female athletes, reflecting the high level of development of MMA in the region, which was showcased through the performances demonstrated by the female participants. I'm really happy to be here. Uh... Uh, I'm really proud to because I'm representing uh, our country, uh, especially I'm a female fighter from India, so I'm very really, uh, happy, happy to represent our country. I'm really proud to be representing my country at this level. Um, the competition has been like fantastic so far, just watching all the fights. In comparison to other competitions, other combat sports, I feel like the level of participation in female is quite high as well, even like uh, for other sports, jiu-jitsu. Uh, uh, kickboxing, they're all kind of reflective, like there's 13 in my category and I compete at kickboxing and they would be roughly the same in, in those categories as well in uh, other parts of the world. Audiences and global athletes also get to experience and enjoy an outdoor expo, apart from the fight which includes a roadshow and a food festival aimed at engaging visitors. Excitement is in the air as the 8th round of competitions takes place here at Khalifa Sports City Hall. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. Brave International Combat Week held a press conference at Khalifa Sports City Hall at the close of the eighth round of competitions. The press conference com commented on the highlights of the day, which featured the best athletes in which they showcased their best performance during the matches. The level was very, very high again. Uh, that was commented on by a lot of the delegates that were there and a lot of the uh, coaches. Um, very successful day, I think, for Bahrain which is good. The host country, I think, has got two or three um, athletes through to the semi-finals tomorrow, so they have a medal. Again, standard was very, very high, um, and, you know, it was good to see so many different countries winning and getting through to, the, to, the, to, to, to today's competition. So hopefully we're going to have a very nice spread of the medals. I've been competing with this, like I told you, three years ago, and every time I get to this, it's just higher and higher level and this year is like I feel like a superstar everything from the welcoming at the airport to the bus drive to here we by police escort and everything it's like I feel really like I belong here and I want to do this as long as I can for, my, for me and for my children it's, of course it's a lot bigger here and uh, all the media around it and all the comparisons. like I've I've competed in like for almost 10 years in all different kinds of sports and around the world on national teams but this is by far the biggest I've ever done. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports Honorary President of the Bahraini Mixed Martial Arts Federation and Chairman of the Higher Organizing Committee for the Brave International Combat Week, Azana Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended yesterday Brave Fighters show which was held at the avenues. He was briefed on the latest preparations of the ninth edition of the International Brave Championship which will be held on Friday at Khalifa City Sports Hall.
patronized by the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed Al Mullah, a parliamentary forum spotlighting the value of tolerance was held today, marking the International Day for Tolerance to highlight the principles and values of tolerance and peaceful coexistence of the Bahraini society. More with Habab Al Ghaffar in this report. Witnessing a large-scale participation of prominent figures, members of the Shura and Representative Councils, members of non-government human rights organizations, religious scholars, heads of diplomatic missions in Bahrain, media figures and specialists. Bahrain sends a message of peace to the region and the world through a forum shedding the light on main issues pertaining to the contribution of the parliament to promoting religious tolerance and peaceful coexistence. Bahrain can send and give and convey to the world, especially to this region which is going through a lot of turmoil and a lot of difficulties. But Bahrain has managed to remain as a, an oasis of peace and calm and coexistence. So this message is mainly to our region and to the world that if we succeed here in Bahrain in this small society which is a mosaic of people and ethnicities and religions, then it can succeed everywhere, here in the region and the rest of the world. Uh, we are all today ambassadors uh, for peace, ambassadors for tolerance. Uh, so I think uh, we, are, uh, we have uh, this burden now on all of, of, all of us uh, in Bahrain. Uh, we have to uh, take this uh, to the world. I keep seeing repeated bold initiatives by His Majesty King Hamad, you know, to promote the idea of uh, tolerance and, uh, well, coexistence. And that is really the key to solving the problems of the region, which is torn by all kinds of wars and conflicts. And uh, unless, you know, people become tolerant, respect each other, we will not see an end to these terrible um, conflicts that are happening. So please, you know, I can only say to every country in the region, follow the example of Bahrain and you will be a lot happier. Bahrain could easily be complacent to say that we have all of these freedoms already. We have 19 different churches, many other congregations. We have uh, an active synagogue, uh, a 200-year-old Hindu temple, etc., etc. Uh, I think the important thing is, is uh, and the very impressive thing, is that neither the government nor the parliament wish to stop there and say enough is enough. We can always make things better. The forum affirms the message, role and responsibility of parliaments in establishing and promoting the values of tolerance and coexistence, dialogue among civilizations and religions, and the importance of community partnership in decision making. Everybody touched on religious freedom related to a certain uh, subject, for example, religious freedom when it comes to human rights, religious freedom when it comes to legislation. Uh, my paper was about uh, the social cohesion that all uh, Bahrainis or people living in Bahrain, whether they're from various religious backgrounds, how we uh, have a social cohesion and we live uh, together. I'm here in, in Bahrain since uh, 20 years. Uh, I feel uh, uh, in the church, it's uh, security, and uh, we we have all our uh, worship. It's freedom. Uh, all the people uh, in all Bahrain, they can come easily and in safe to the churches uh, to pray. An additional step in the right way by the Kingdom of Bahrain that will of course impact at furthering the coalitions, the alliances between religions to promote a message, not only a message but a trend and a process that will not reinforce the relations between individuals but communities and the religions and civilizations but also to protect the humanity in general against the scourges of violence, of terrorism, of discrimination. Bahrain has always been a pioneering role model for tolerance and peace, based on a rich history, full of communication and acceptance of others, and consistent with the goals and aspirations of its wise leadership. Bahrain's experience in interfaith dialogue and peaceful coexistence is under the spotlight today in a great initiative by the parliament to promote religious tolerance. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met today member of the Fatah Central Committee of the State of Palestine, Azam Al Ahmed, who is currently on a visit to the kingdom. The minister praised the efforts exerted by the Palestinian people to consolidate and strengthen their Palestinian factions in order to establish their independent state and restore their legitimate rights. Sheikh Khalid reiterated the kingdom's supportive stance towards the Palestinian issue, stressing the need to reach a just and comprehensive solution to the issue on the basis of the two-state solution and establishing an independent Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital on the borders of 4th of June 1967 and in accordance with the resolutions of the relevant international legitimacy and the Arab Peace Initiative. The minister also stressed the need for the international community to shoulder its responsibilities and obligate Israel to stop all violations committed against the Palestinian people, land and holy sites which are contrary to international norms, laws, religions, principles, and human values. For his part, Al Ahmed expressed the appreciation of the Palestinian people for Bahrain's support to the Palestinian cause in various international forms, wishing the Kingdom of Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, today met with the Director of the UNESCO's International Bureau of Education, Dr. Mantesta Marope, in the presence of a number of experts from the Bureau, where the two sites discussed means of cooperation between the Bureau and the Ministry in the fields of curriculum development and training. The Minister and the Director signed a supplementary memorandum on the citizenship and human rights curriculum development and training of specialists in the field in light of the positive results results achieved in the previous stage of cooperation. The minister noted the importance of the memorandum in supporting the ministry's development efforts and enhancing them with international expertise in external assessment, training and consultation, affirming that external assessment is important for the first stage of implementing the citizenship and human rights promoting school project. For her part, Dr. Maropi asserted that the memorandum comes within the general framework of cooperation between the two parties the level of cooperation, especially in the field of enhancing citizenship, human rights, coexistence and peace. As part of the ongoing efforts to maintain security in the kingdom, a dangerous terrorist had been arrested while his partner has escaped to Iran. The two terrorists bombed a police bus on October the 27th, resulting in the death of a policeman, Salman Enjem, and injuring nine others. This was one of a series of terrorist crimes that were planned and executed by a cell linked to Iran-based terror fugitives and closely connected to the Iranian Revolutionary Guards. The disruption of the terror cell foiled a major plot to target public personalities in Bahrain and launch attacks with explosives on three oil pipelines. The members of the terror cell had received intensive training at camps run by the Iranian Revolutionary Guards where they were taught the use of explosives and guns. The Iranian Revolutionary Guards funded the cell and provided logistical support through the Iran-based fugitives. In October 2011, the members of the cell traveled by land to Syria and then to Iran. Their passports were not stamped at the Syrian-Iranian border. They traveled again to Iran in July 2017. The terror cell members were Qasim Abdullah Ali Ahmed, also known as Qasim Al Mamun, aged 28, currently a fugitive in Iran. His Bahraini nationality has been revoked. He was sentenced in absentia to life imprisonment for charges related to terrorism and for organizing training for terrorists. Sadiq Jafar Mohammed Abdullah Tog, aged 36, currently a fugitive in Iran and wanted on terror related charges, including manufacturing and processing homemade bombs. Mahdi Ibrahim Jasim Abdullah, age 28, currently a fugitive in Iran, sentenced in absentia to 30 years on terror charges, including bomb making. Zahir Ibrahim Jasim Abdullah Abbas, aged 37, owns a restaurant in Sitra, arrested, took part in plotting and executing various acts of terrorism, and received explosives and weapons training in Iran. Arrested with an encrypted phone programmed in Iran and used to exchange encrypted messages between the terror cells members.
Mohamed Mehdi Mohamed Hassan, age 39, a heavy truck driver, fugitive wanted on suspicions of plotting acts of terrorism, manufacturing bombs and executing acts of terrorism, sentenced in absentia for eight cases of robbery and rioting. Cell members were trained by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard on how to plan and execute bomb attacks. This included training on how to plant bombs. The types of explosives used included TNT, RDX and C4. They were also taught how to make molds for shaped charges and received training on the technical aspects of bomb making. They were trained to handle tasers, AK-4070s, M16s, RPGs and pistols. Cell members were then given specific training by Qasim al mamin This included how to search for a secure location to store bomb making material and guns, finding an appropriate location to set up a bomb making workshop, preparing for terrorist activities and searching for sensitive targets. Besides giving instructions, uh, Qasim provided the terror cell members with the funding necessary to execute these terrorist acts. Upon arrival from Iran, the cell members rented a flat which they used as a bomb-making workshop. Material to make explosives has been seized from them. Some of these materials had been kept in rubber tubes, similar to the ones used in the blast that targeted the police no in November. Among the terrorist acts executed by the cell were targeting security patrols in Sitra on 12th and 14th of February 2017 with explosive devices made by the cell. Three private cars were damaged in the attack along with public and private property. Monitoring and targeting a security patrol on 13th of August 2017 using an explosive device. Plotting and making and setting off a bomb in day on the 2nd of October 2017 where five policemen were injured while providing security services during the Ashura season. Targeting a police bus on the 27th of October 2017 as it drove towards Manama along the Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman Highway near Jad Hafs. A homemade bomb placed in a rubber tube was remotely detonated. The resultant blast caused the death of a policeman, Salman Anjum, and wounded nine others. Their injuries ranging from medium to severe. A private car was also damaged. The terror cell stole the number plates of private cars and heavy vehicles and used them in their terror operations by fixing them on the vehicles they used to commit crimes. The General Directorate of Criminal Investigation and Forensic Science took the necessary action and has referred the cases to the public prosecutor. The investigation to find and arrest the remaining terrorists is ongoing.